What's going on, y'all? So, so we are back for another episode review, finally, of Greenleaf. This is season one. Uh, no, bitch. This season three, episode six. She changes everything. That can be a campaign slogan, okay? That's on the part of, yes, we can. Keep hope alive. She changes everything. Let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. Okay. Um, this episode was a trip. And you want to know who really was a trip and who needs to be tripped, slapped, and beat? Okay. Not whooped, but beat. Zora. Okay. That little bitch. And I'm sorry to be cursing because y'all know this Christian stuff or whatever. But that little bitch. Okay. Um, bitch. She just... Woo! This is how I know I'm not ready for kids yet because I will knock a motherfucker out, okay? Bitch, you want to do all this shit? Take your ass out there in the world and do what you got to do, okay? But when it don't work, act, act, uh, work out, don't come back to me saying, Mama, you was right, you was right, because, bitch, I know I was right, okay? I ain't going to call a bitch, you know. I ain't going to be one of them parents that call my kid a bitch or whatever because I feel some type of way. My mama never did that to me, but, so I never do that to my kid. But, um, little girl, little girl, Go get what you're asking for. And when it don't work out, don't come back and tell me crying. <laughs> no, because I don't I don't have time for it. I don't have time for it. But anyway, let's get to the beginning of this episode. We got Lady May coming down there to talk to um Bishop and basically telling him, this is the revised copy of what I'm going to say at the um when we go to church on Sunday. This is all talking about the divorce and everything and what's going to happen with the church. And basically, he looking at the stuff and he was like, so where is the sin that you going to step down as first lady? Because, um, baby girl, I don't know what world you live in. I'm the pastor and I'm going to forever be the pastor of Greenleaf until I die. And you ain't going to be first lady no more once we divorce. You got to get the fuck out of here. And basically, she said, my Lord is telling me that I need to stay put. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to stay put. Okay? We built this church together. Therefore, we're going to run this church together. I said, you know what? First lady, I understand where you're coming from. But even though I'm not in a church life like that, I don't think that's how that's work. Okay? I mean, it's kind of fucked up. You know, even though he the one that... Can we... Oh... Are they equally to blame for the bullshit that's going on in their marriage? Equally? No. I think it's more like 40-60, okay? And 60% being on his part, all right? Because they both cheated and he did some other shit. You know what I'm saying? So, he basically was like, girl, you, you better get that shit together. And, um... I never noticed when I was looking at the opening credits of the show that the pictures show literally a timeline through the history of the black church from when we was in, um, from when Adam and Eve come through and then, you know, um, when Africans get the, 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 the Christianity and then from slaves and then to, um, you know, being our own, owning our own church back in the day and then up to the modern day, bitch, it took me three seasons to see this. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> but anyway, we see Charity. May go up in there trying to wake up Charity. Charity is knocked the fuck out because she didn't took an over count of the pill um, to knock her out. The baby been crying. Maricela come up in there. Maricela, whatever her name, she come up in there. She holding the baby. She was like, yeah, I heard the baby crying all night, even through the washing machine when I was down there washing the clothes and stuff. And, you know, Lady May trying to see if the girl has hell. And she was like, no, mama, I'm not back on them pills or whatever. I took some over-the-counter medicine. You can get addicted to over-the-counter medicine, too, okay? Um, They use some over-the-counter medicine to make meth, okay? You know, don't ask me how I know because I watch Breaking Bad. That's how I know, okay? But meth ain't nothing but chemicals and shit put together anyway. It's a chemistry experiment. I don't understand why y'all want to put all that shit in your body, but, hey, it is what it is. And so... Basically, she trying to get her out her funk and want her to get up off the couch. Then we see, um, you know, Lil Zora going in there talking to Sophia. All of a sudden trying to be nice or whatever. Sophia ain't here for it. She was like, girl, who told you to come up in here? Okay, grandma told me to come up in here. But I'm just seeing how you doing. You know, I didn't know after me leaving that you was really sick. And she was like, girl, you can get the fuck up out of here because if you the one would say some shit like, um, uh, maybe I'm pregnant, knowing damn well, now I can't have no kids. I said, okay, Sophia, now I understand you being upset. But, you know, and Zora needs to be cussed out for a little things, for plenty of things. But it's not, you can't really be mad at her for saying that because she didn't know what was going on. She was just being a little bitch, okay? 
But I get it. You know, she's taking her frustrations out on everyone. And I feel so bad for little Sophia because we are literally seeing somebody lose their faith. And that's that's a sad sight to see. No matter what religion you are, that is a sad sight to see. And, um, you know, Grace get a call from Darius telling her that one of the um, parishioners, a lady, she's being charged with murder, murdering her husband while she was asleep, while he was asleep. And it was in self-defense, though. And so she trying to see if that um defense fund is working and if it's up and running. And then you got Rochelle ass. This Jezebel going in there to talk to Bishop. And she was like, oh, so I'm welcome back up in here. He was like, bitch, on business. And she talking about cryptocurrency and all this other stuff that he ain't never heard of. And I said, baby, don't get involved in this shit because she could take you for everything because you so naive to what it is. And he don't even look like the type that's going to go look it up and see what it all entails. Okay. And, um, Lady May, you know, she gets a phone call from, um, Marisol or whatever. Was it her phone? No, Marisol was on the phone. And then she called Lil Zora on the phone with her shit. And, um, she was like, girl, are you on my phone? And she was like, it is what it is. That's how her look was like. And what you going to do about it? Marla saw a trick and told Lady May, okay? And I would have did the same thing. What you're not going to do is try to run over me just because, you know, you think you ain't got no uh, body up in here, uh, no authority figure up in here, you know, watching your ass, okay? Because Lady May is at the church, and she's welcoming Maxine um, Patterson. I want to say Maxine Waters so bad, but it's Maxine Patterson, a.k.a. Patty LaBelle. And everybody gets so like, it's a real celebrity. Oh my God. She just, oh my God, Kareem going crazy and all this stuff. And you know, when <laughs> Maxine show up and Bishop sees her, he looking like, mm. so um, Lady May didn't tell you that I was coming. No, she didn't. And Rochelle just got this look on her face like, what the fuck your wife is up to? He was like, I don't know, but we going to find out. And I just came with Rochelle. Rochelle got her hand in everything. Like, she don't fuck with Maxine either because um, we'll see later on in the episode the way that she was looking when Lady Mace mentioned her name to the congregation. And she was just sitting back there doing what she did when she arrived at that party. Just sitting there like this. Mm -hmm. I said, girl, what is your problem? You, it... <laughs> Girl, you know, you just, it don't take much to be happy sometimes. If you eliminate all this trying to get back at people out your life and all this stuff and, and, and try to find your happiness, you know what I'm saying? If you learn to love yourself first, you can go flourish, okay? Flourish, people flourish. Then you got Rochelle talking to Grace and Darius. They up there talking about this lady who um basically killed her husband with a hammer. And she said the hammer was used on her too. And so... Grace talking about her defense or whatever. Rochelle interrupts talking to um Darius. Did you get your shirt custom made? This is how the congregation how the conversation went. So they saying that she went on ahead and um you know killed her husband with a hammer, even though that's what she said was used on her. Is that custom made? I'm talking about your shirt. Uh no, it, I just got it off the rack. I'm just saying because it looked custom made. Did you buy it for him, Grace? No, I buy my stuff all the time. Oh, so you a man who know how to dress? Because, you know, some men don't know how to. And then when they put the coat on, the shirt on, or whatever, the way that they put the collar and everything, and then the way that you got it open, you know what you know what to do and all this stuff. Uh-huh. Girl, do you want to get back to the defense fund or whatever? Grace, whatever it is that you want to do, I'm down with because I'm pretty sure I can, you know, I like your discernment and all that stuff. Mm, you look real good. I said, bitch, are you really going to flirt with her man in front of her and then acknowledge her and let her know, bitch, I'm flirting with your man in front of you? Okay. And when they left out, Grace was like, oh, she like you. That bitch trying to play me, but I'm not trying to fall for it. But did you notice Darius look? Okay. Darius, when she said that and Grace walked away, Rochelle was down the hall. Darius like this. He feeling his collar. And I said, oh, so a bitch making you feel good and making you think something about yourself? Grace wasn't doing that? Because, you know, Grace is always this and always that. Grace don't do nothing but give you sex. Is that what it is? Girl. Girl, whatever. Darius, you better calm the fuck down. Then you got Maxine talking to, um, <clears throat> talking to Lady May. And she was like, you know, basically talking about the whole thing with the church. And she was saying that stuff don't, um, you know, work out. I'm going to help you out. She want her to come down, speak at her ladies' day, um, her Lady May Day, and they going to do the damn thing. 
Then she started talking about charity. She said, I want to know what's going on with her. And she got something going on for her. She going to bring in Iyanla Van Zandt. I said, Iyanla out here getting her checks, okay? She's getting her checks off of her show, this show, and BSV that come on tomorrow, okay? Bitch. Charity looking like, what the fuck? Because Lady May brought her in there. She ain't want to talk to nobody. And, of course, you know, Iyanla told her about herself and got her to open up. Basically... It's the middle child syndrome. She feels overlooked. She feels as if nobody cares about her. Um, she never, she, cause, um, Yana was like, why would you marry a man that is gay? You mean to tell me you didn't know that he was gay? And she was like, I didn't know. I didn't know. She said, that's a big ass secret that you can't have. So, um, and come again, she was like, okay, I was with him because he made me feel safe or I was trying to feel safe because I never felt safe in my life, you know? And so, had her to break down. Next thing you know, Iyanla being Iyanla, got her just rocking on her bosoms and shit. And, um, you know, Lady May came up there, called Zora, cussed her out and in a Christian way. You know, you little heathen ass bitch. You should be grateful for the things that God gave you. You know, you up here trying to steal people's phones and stuff like that. Um, She yanked that phone off that cordless and she said you ain't getting shit else, okay? Here goes Zora. I hate it here. And she throwing a tantrum, bitch, like she two years old. I said, I done seen some two, three-year-old that act more respectable than this little bitch, okay? And she was just getting on my goddamn nerves, and I wanted to slap her through the damn TV. Like, you have been afforded a whole bunch of stuff, and you want to go back to somebody that's abusing your ass. And even Lady May said that. She said, bitch, you ain't mad at nobody but yourself because you want to go back to somebody that was beating you? Okay, you need to think about that. I said, read, Lady May. But you stayed with your husband for a while and y'all wasn't kick clacking like it was. So, you know, you can take your advice too. I guess she's taking her advice now because they get a divorce. But uh, Sophia, little boyfriend, Roberto, come over there to see her. And they started talking and basically, you know, um, she was just being in her feelings about the fact that she can't have kids. And he was just trying to comfort her a little bit and said, you know, it's many women that was in the Bible that were barren and later had kids in life. And she was like, barren? Barren, bitch. I'm sterile. Okay, there's a difference. And he said it's practically the same thing. And she was like, No, bitch, you ain't gonna get it. Okay, you don't understand and all this stuff. I can't ever have kids and whoop de woo. Roberto was like, I see you about to be in your bag and I'm about to be out because I ain't got time to deal with this. I'll talk to your ass tomorrow when you calm the fuck down. I said, Oh, Roberto, so that's how it's gonna be when your woman get upset or whatever. You just gonna walk out instead of trying to comfort her and talk her ass down. Hey, it is what it is. You know, he young, he don't understand. But um, at that point, what really can you do? What really can you do? But let them just act it out a little bit. She got to get that frustration out before she, you know, go to the next level, I guess. I don't know. Zora goes up into Lady May's room, want to talk to um her mama. She called her mama, telling her that she want to come home. Jacob say no, okay. Um, Grace have a conversation with Sophia. Sophia says she ain't going back to teach the little saints, okay. And that she's not going back to church. Okay. It is what it is. It's just not, it's just not about to happen. She's over it. She said, God, you know, betrayed her and all this stuff. And I was just sitting here like, Ooh, don't say that, baby. Don't say that. Mm -mm. It hurts my heart when I hear people say stuff like that. It really do. But, um, you know, she's just in a feeling. She don't understand what's going on. And she just, she just needs somebody to blame and, it's like, I did everything right. Why is this happening to me? You know, I put all my faith in you and I was supposed to be awarded with stuff. I'm being punished and all this stuff. That's what it feels like for her. And she's just going through a crisis of faith right now. Um, and she just don't understand. Um, <clears throat> so after that, we see Lady May uh, going back down there to Bishop. They having a back and forth. And he was like, so was it really your plan to bring Maxine Patterson out here? To talk to Charity or for something else. She said, bitch, I'll see you tomorrow in church. And she was like, is it really your plan? Because even though you probably not telling me what it is, I already know what it is. And she said, bitch, like I said, I will see you tomorrow at 7 a.m. Because Yana Van Zandt want to talk to us with Charity. So they do have this meeting. And basically, you know, um, Charity was telling them, I felt scared for the whole, my whole life or whatever. And... I just felt like nobody was there to protect me. Nobody was there for me like y'all was there for Faith and everybody else. And as the conversation progresses, it sounds as if Charity was just saying how she, you know, Lady May wasn't trying to hear it. Lady May said, 
we not finna do this today. Y'all not finna come at me and make it seem like I'm the reason because I already got one daughter that's coming at me saying that shit. And I got a whole bunch of stuff that's going on today. I didn't bring your ass up in here for this shit, okay? You talking about something you ain't never felt safe? What about Faith, who was going through some real stuff? She ain't feel safe. What about little old me, when I was younger, who didn't feel safe? And see, this is why Charity, you know, I know people can't stand Charity. Half the time, I can't stand her ass either. But given the things that she going through, I swear to God, I'm, I can understand why she's going through this stuff because she feels left out. And she's been feeling that way since the first season. And we kind of see that shit. So she's like a grown-ass kid acting out at this point. And it's unfortunate. And once she starts talking and trying to get out on her chest what's going on, no one is trying to listen. And everybody's trying to pacify and say, yeah, I understand. Even Bishop say, yeah, I understand. And I'm here for you. She's like, no, you're not. No, you're not. Okay, Lady May completely dismissed her. You know, basically trying to say, your problems aren't big. You don't have real problems, okay? And I can't stand when people say that to people because you don't know exactly what's going on in people's lives or whatever. And Lady May is all about herself because she got the pressure that's coming up with what's going on in that church. You know, um, she about to get up there and do her little speech and shit like that. Um, I don't know who office they was in. It was one of the um offices, either Grace office or uh the Bishop office or somebody office. Lil Zora walked her ass up in there at the church and got on Skype to Isaiah. I said, you know what? Here she go. So, hey baby, I said, girl, really, really. Okay, mind you, Carissa came over there and said that your daddy said we can't take you back. And she was like, it's fine, it's cool, everything's gonna work out, it'll all be over soon. Remember that, because on that next episode, it looked like um, Lil Zora finna, she finna jet. Okay, and I want her to, I want her to. Like, sometimes, you gotta let these kids go out into the world and let them learn shit, okay, on their own. Because sometimes, talking ain't enough. Talking ain't enough, it ain't gonna get through to them. So now, it's church day, right? And so Charity gets up there singing her ass off, okay? Everybody is there. Iyanla, you got Miss Connie. She's sitting up in the front row. And then, you know, Lady May and Bishop come up there. And Bishop told, she told Bishop that she going to stay on for the First Lady until it was Ladies Day that she does, okay? And so they get up there and they make the announcement. This may come to a disappointment to some of y'all, but me and Bishop, me and the um, First Lady, we get a divorce. We try, we try, we try. Girl, as soon as they said we get the divorce, <gasps> oh my god, <sighs> what the fuck? <sighs> what is going on? I said, God damn, <laughs> God damn. <laughs> okay, everybody looking like, ain't this about a bitch? Okay, but Lady May get up there talking um her stuff and saying how women gonna be empowered and you know she changes everything. That's gonna be the name of her Ladies Day. She's gonna stay on as First Lady until her Ladies Day or whatever. And Maxine Patterson gonna be a um guest talker. And everybody was like, oh my God, Maxine, Maxine. That's what Rochelle was sitting behind Maxine looking like. Mm hmm. I said, girl, what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? What did Maxine do? Okay, Maxine put a wrench in your plans. Okay, girl, it's just a mess. Okay, um, when this was over with, after the service, you get what happens when everything always, when some, some big news come through all the time, gossip happens. You got the parishioners in there just in the hallways, just talking and talking and talking about, oh, one conversation was like, didn't they just do that um damn seminar for the engaged couples, you know, and now they going through this. And it was like, you know, the ones that can't do, they teach, right? I was like, damn. Then you got, um, uh, Cord what's her name? Corinne's aunt, the one with the money. She over there talking to Rochelle, talking about some. Listen, uh, it's kind of fucked up what's going on, but um, I just don't know how I'm staying on with somebody who's divorced. I can't have a divorced pastor, so I'm going to stay on until Ladies Day is over with, and when Maxine leaves, I'm gone. I said, damn. So Maxine was talking to um Lady May outside and was like, you know what, girl, we're going to get this together. We're going to get you this church. We're going to get your name up on this shit, and if we don't, we're going to build you another one, okay? Everything going to work out the way that it should be. Bitch, 
Lady May gonna confront uh, Iyana and say, I had you down here to talk to Charity. I don't want to, I didn't respect you coming at me like that. She was like, girl, I wasn't coming at you. But since you took it that way, you can call me down here because you didn't call me down here. That's right. But you can call me down here for later and we can talk about the pain that you're going through. I said, Iyana, you didn't really have to read her that way so quick, so nasty, so rude. Not really rude, but she did got her, she got Lady May together a little bit. And I was like, oh, take heed, okay? You know, um, you better flex. And, oh, excuse me. Um, Sophia was talking to Grace, and she was like, girl, let me tell you what happened at church. She was like, girl, I already know. People was blowing up my phones. It was like, when you coming back to the Little Saints? I told you, mama, I'm not coming back. I'm not ever stepping foot in church again. I'm not here for God. God ain't here for me. I said, whew. Okay, every time I hear people, I tell you, it just does something to me. And she goes and takes a little walk. She goes to the water, and she looks at her little necklace, and she pulls that necklace off, and she throws that shit in the water. And I said, damn, it's the cross. And she was just really over it. You know, um, put down in the comments, have you ever had a person, no person, or yourself has ever had lost um, a question, question in faith and lost your you know, fervor for the faith and things like that, whether it's you're a spiritual person, if you're a church person, or just anything, have you ever lost it and start questioning it or whatever, you know, stuff like that, going through like little Sophia situation, let's talk, all right, but this was Greenleaf, glad it's back, y'all tell me how y'all feel about it, and I will see y'all later, I got one more review to do, and then I'm taking my ass to bed, peace.